Hey, it's Scott, and welcome back to another episode of Spin Magazine's Lip Service. I'm sitting with the incredible Jake Wesley Rogers. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's so great to see you. I was saying to Darren that I saw you at the Troubadour last October, and one of the best shows I have seen in years. You were incredible. I'm a fan for life. By the way, amongst your fans, you have so many celebrity fans. You have Kate Hudson, Hilary Swank, Ryan Reynolds, Zoe Kravitz, Courtney Love, who I play with, and... <laughs> Elton John, who we'll get into that relationship and how you guys come to, came to meet and, and obviously your whole history. But but yeah, I, I, I want to say first and foremost, what a great show. Mm. What a great performer. Thank you. And, uh, and I want to talk about your whole journey, Jake. So let's start from the beginning, really. Um, take me back to a little, the show is a little bit about like this is your life and your history. Yeah. And obviously we'll get into all your new music. But take me back a little bit to the beginning, how you grew up. I think you grew up in Kansas City. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was and born in Missouri. Missouri. And, uh, and just a little bit about music around you. I think your mom was a DJ, a rock and roll DJ. She was. I know. I kind of feel comfortable here. <laughs> yeah. So talk to me about all the music you grew up around and sort of what got you into music early on. Because I think guitar was your first instrument. Uh, ironically, there's not a lot of guitar in your music now. Yeah. <laughs> it, sort of intentional. <laughs> yeah. Mainly because in high school, I would play in bands and I, I always played keyboard and all the, the guitar players, their amps are always so loud. So I think I sort of just subconsciously like took them out of the band. But I'm bringing them back slowly. Okay. I'm yeah, starting to love it again. <laughs> I was going to say on your new single, which we'll get into, it feels more almost rock oriented, yeah. more uh, sort of pop rock. But so early on, it was who were the artists that were inspiring you? Oh, I mean, yeah, my mom worked in rock radio, like you mentioned. And so I was, I was going to a lot of, you know, like, late 90s, early 2000s, rock concerts. But I feel like I always loved pop music the most, you know. There's just something about it. Like, you know, when I was young, it was Britney and Christina Aguilera. And there's just something about, like, the spectacle of it and the performance of it. And I think I loved, because I was obsessed with this one Britney Spears DVD, and I just loved watching her, and I loved, like, the sets and the performance and 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 you know, it, it was so theatrical. And I, I think, I think that's what I really loved. And I think my first kind of big, big love in music was, um, My Chemical Romance when I was pretty young. Amazing. Because they released Welcome to Black Parade when I was like 10. And I just rinsed that album because it's just, <laughs> and it holds up. It's still yeah. so good. Um, and I, I, I kind of forgot that that was such a big influence on me because it, you know, it's a concept. It was my first kind of step into like what a concept album is too. Yeah. And, and their visuals were just so stunning. And, and shortly after that, I got so into Gaga too, yeah. which like, of course was a huge spectacle. And, of course. And but my parents kind of raised me on like, um, on 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 rock, um, you know, at that time current rock. But you know, my my dad was, you know, really into everything from the eagles to to funk music to i don't know it was really just like a it was a pretty wide spectrum um of music and and high school is kind of when i feel like i started going really back like that's when i started like actually listening to you know elton and and queen and fleetwood mac and that's that's when I was like, oh, who are these people that actually influence the people that I've been listening to my whole life? So Yeah, I was going to say, everyone has like a Fleetwood Mac phase, me, oh my God. me included. Yes. Um, such a huge influence. Stevie Nicks, incredible. Yeah. Um, have you seen them, by the way? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw them on the, I think their like first reunion tour when it was the five of them like five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, high school was like fully just a, a Fleetwood Mac hole that i <laughs> fell into <laughs> and, and haven't really come out but <laughs> were, were, you, were your parents encouraging for you to get into music obviously you know your mom being a rock dj yeah. or i don't know if she was it rock and roll that she was mm -hmm. were they was that a, a you know were they pushing you towards music or were they like hey you know maybe you should do something else in life or was there a, a conscious yeah. effort to sort of steer you in that direction i don't think they ever had to push me <laughs> um i think they were probably glad that i had something to put my energy into because yeah. I'm sure I know I had a lot of energy um, and they're very supportive and um, really wanted me to music even in moments where I didn't really even believe in myself like I remember when I, I, I applied to one college to study music and songwriting and I got in and I was like I don't I don't know and they're like no you have to go like we'll figure it out so 
Yeah, really. When I, they, they were never, you know, they weren't like stage parents, like you have to do this, but they, they definitely made it clear that if I want to do it, I can, which is, I mean, more than I can ask for, you know? Yeah. There's a, a great TikTok that you put up not long ago. And I've been a big fan of your TikTok recently too, where you talk about buying your mom a vintage <laughs> Jaguar. So every time you guys get to go on stage and yeah. you do a little huddle with the band. And I think at the end you say something like Jaguar. Yeah, right? Jaguar on three. <laughs> yeah. My mom said that when I was really young, she, not really young, but like kind of when I started doing this, cause she was helping me out a lot early on kind of jokingly, my momager. Um, she's really not like, Mo when you hear the word momager it's she's the most chill one you probably could have ever met not my manager anymore yeah, but she was <laughs> i have one now yeah, yeah yeah well she's just helping a lot because you know i think because she she was in radio but kind of knew enough that like people can really get taken advantage of in this industry really fast especially when you're young so um but yeah she always said like no commission no money but just she really <laughs> wants a vintage jaguar and i'm like oh, okay well We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. I can see that happening for very soon if it hasn't happened well, already, you. by the way. But talk me through a little bit of your early life. So uh, was there a, a sort of religious, uh, obviously you grew up in like the Bible Belt, I believe, yeah. right? So was it a very religious childhood for you? Or Yeah, I don't, I don't remember religion being like super influential in my early childhood. You know, we were Methodist and I feel like Methodist is pretty watered down and chill um <laughs> but but being in the bible belt i didn't really notice it till i was older until you know i kind of had puberty and obviously realized i was gay as hell and <laughs> they was all around i was like oh like, this is weird and you go to school and everyone's talking about these things and saying you're going to hell and all this so that's kind of when it started affecting me but it really wasn't in my nuclear family as much as it was like you know, in Missouri, there's mega churches like you throw a rock and it will yeah. hit a mega church. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's kind of how I kind of got it by just being around it. And then early on, you started performing really young at mm -hmm. 13, 14, almost like a child prodigy. Uh, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was probably <laughs> pretty mediocre, but, <laughs> <laughs> but were you performing, you know, at, at your school? Were you performing at, you know, for your family? What, what was it? At early I, early? I started doing theater when I was like 11 and you know, we moved to Springfield, Missouri and there's this amazing community theater there. Um, I think that place kind of saved my life too. Cause no matter what was going on at school or whatever, I had this kind of freaky little place where everybody was a freak and we just danced and sang and, I think that's also when I just realized how much I love performing. Mm. You know, I like I like writing songs because I like telling my story, but I just there's nothing really compares to going on stage. Definitely, and I would say you know some of my favorite singers, be it you know Freddie Mercury or Mick Jagger. I mean, obviously theater is such an integral part of that performance. If you watch someone like Freddie Mercury, an incredible performer, mm -hmm. and you have that. So obviously, you know, theater probably had a big hand in shaping how you went on to perform. Do you, do you think that it did? I think so. You know, I mean, we had this really amazing and intense director named Lorianne, and she just always talks so much about energy and mm. like, you know, like just little things like when the song is over, like holding the pose and just like standing in the energy and like, like not just going to the next thing, like little things like that, that like, when you go see someone play and you see them lose themselves, like ideas like that, like were, were shown to me really young mm. and I didn't really understand it then, but I think I understand it more now what she was talking about. Definitely. And granted we were doing like, I don't know, like some like Alice in Wonderland Jr. or something, <laughs> <Right>. but, like, <laughs> but it, it all connects. Yeah, you it know? definitely does. And it definitely carries over to where you're at now. So, yeah. so you start performing at 13, 14. I happened to stumble upon this uh, great video of you on YouTube, like 15, America's Got Talent. <laughs> I, think, I think you were 15, right? Yeah. What was that like? What was that experience like leading up to that? At mm -hmm. that point, were you like, I made it? Or did you think, you know, I don't love this industry. I have some doubts about getting into the industry. What was the experience like for you overall? Yeah, it was complicated because I was 14 when I auditioned for America's Got Talent. And at that point, it was like, 
that's just kind of what it seemed like I should do. You know, I'm 14. I'm not old enough to audition for like The Voice, and I'm in Missouri, and everybody watches watches these shows. And you know, I asked my parents like, "Can we go do this?" And they're like, "Yeah, we'll go take you to audition." You know, and I did, and ended up getting further along than I thought I would. And at that time, it was I mean, it was a huge learning yeah. lesson because it is a pretty dark version of the entertainment industry mm. in that like it's not it's not really about the music it's just about you know the drama and i was gonna say the drama yeah the perf- the performative nature of it all so it was really disorienting honestly to but one of the biggest learning lessons of my life was just that i i you know i got, went back to missouri after i was 15 Everyone in your little town's kind of looking at you like, oh, my God, you did it. And you're like, I don't feel like <laughs> I did it. And 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 I think in that moment, I, I didn't realize it, but I made a, a choice. I was like, you know, this is probably going to be a really long road. Mm. And for some reason, I decided to keep going down because that little quick fix didn't do it for me at all. Yeah, how far along did you get in the process with the show? Um, it, it doesn't really show you on Yeah, YouTube, so. I know. It's kind of like pre-YouTube, so a lot of the clips are like weird and like they're like, they're like a half step down or something. I don't know how it works. <laughs> 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 but um, I made it to like one live round. I think it was like the quarterfinals. And then, and then I was eliminated and then like Sharon Osbourne brought me back for mm. like the wild card thing. So yeah, I did kind of like to live performances and do you get to pick the song or do they give you the song to perform how does that work i don't even know how that process that's works. a good question yeah. i well i really wanted to do the chain oh great song. so yeah. bad yeah. and i also wanted to do a florence and the machine song and you know i sent my kind of like i want to do these songs i love these songs and then they send back like i'm like no you can't and they send you back like the weirdest five songs you've ever seen in your life <laughs> and you're like maybe Maybe they don't want me <laughs> to do super well. <laughs> what were the songs? Um, well, I ultimately ended up doing like to- I think "Toxic" by Britney Spears, which is obviously one of the best songs sure. ever. Um, and I did "Edge of Glory" by Gaga, but I don't even remember the other ones. They're just really random. And I remember the mainly I just remember being like, "Oh, I didn't really get to like do the song I wanted for whatever reason." Yeah. And doesn't really matter now. But. Well, now they should be sorry that you didn't win because obviously you've gone on to do way better than a lot of people. That <laughs> I'm that glad show. I didn't win because <laughs> those contracts, if you win, oh, yeah. are scary, scary, scary. They, they own you for yes. life, I'm sure. <laughs> so talk me a little bit about, Jake, you, you moved to Nashville uh, at some point. I think you were, what, maybe 18, 19 when you moved there? Yeah. And that really started to shape your career and actually started you on your, your journey in songwriting, I believe, too, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. I went there to study songwriting at school and um you know the school I went to is kind of like within the Nashville industry a bit and um I like played this little showcase my freshman year and it ended in a publishing deal so pretty quickly I was like writing songs professionally whatever that means and I had no idea what I was doing but uh, essentially, you moved there. You didn't really know anyone in Nashville, mm-hmm. and you had to build a community. There is a great community there for musicians, yeah. obviously. So yeah. how did you meet the right people? How did you get in the showcase? How did it all happen for you? I mean, I really just pointed all back to, like, playing my songs. And mm. just, you know, when I, I look back to those moments where the doors opened, and it was really just because I sat down at the piano and sang a song that I wrote that I did never think would you know get me in front of this person or that person it's just me me being me so that's why i really believe in the power of authenticity and just and just not trying to follow trends or anything and just because that's what's opened the doors over and over again so i kind of just showed up to nashville with a few songs and (laughs) but did you start performing there early on or yeah had you you known people that you know, you met other musicians and then you started to play out a little bit here and there. Yeah. You know, just kind of like the natural thing, like a friend asks you to like open yeah. or like yeah. stuff like you just kind of meet people as you go. And, you know, Nashville is a really interesting place. And I'm, I'm glad I lived there because I think it, it taught me how to really honor a song and mm. construct a song. I'm like, 
such a geek about lyrics. Yeah. Um, probably to a fault sometimes that I probably like really annoy people that I'm trying to write a song with. Cause I just, I really just can't just put a lyric in that doesn't matter. Um, it just kind of kills me. So, <laughs> and I think Nashville does that best. Um, yeah. But it's fairly unheard of that you would go to Nashville and do a showcase and get a publishing deal, like literally like right after oh, your it was first stupid. showcase. Yeah. I, I was really in shock and it really like, I didn't really know what any of it meant either. And I feel like no one really <laughs> told me. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of just had to learn, but it was an interesting time because, you know, Nashville was and is kind of going through growing phase where like I moved there 2015 that was right when some like labels and publishing were like, we need to, you know, start working with more, you know, pop artists and because it's so country. The mm. infrastructure there is so country. It still is. If anybody tells you it isn't, they're lying. <laughs> it's country. Um, and, but they're trying. You know, I think there's moments where people come out of there that aren't. And, um, yeah, so I think I did, it was, I think it just kind of felt like the right timing. Like I just, I came in there. I, played my little song on the piano and they liked it and for better or for worse I don't really think they knew what to do with me yeah. but but because of that I was kind of just allowed to like really figure out what I wanted to say and I'm so grateful for that time because I mean I went insane for a while because I I did know what I wanted to say mm. I think that's the most important thing as an artist is just to say something with conviction um and I'll never forget. Uh, I remember I heard um, Brandy Carlisle's record, by the way, I Forgive You, in 2018. And it was right around that time. And she said it, you know, she just like, I heard it. I heard her truth. And it was like this huge turning point. And, yeah. You know, that record was made in Nashville. And it just all kind of clicked. And I was living right on Music Row. And I realized I was living like right next to where she recorded it. So I, I feel like it. I, that really affected me and really, I really soaked it up. So. Do you think it, it took you a while to find your true voice? Because obviously you got in the room early on writing with people and, and sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't yeah. click. And, and sometimes it does take a while as an artist to really find your true self. And as you mentioned, authenticity. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a lot about what you stand for. So how long did it take you to think to find really who you were in terms of songwriting and, and that mm -hmm. whole process after writing with some people that probably it didn't click right away? Yeah, it was, I mean... I'm still figuring it out, but you've definitely figured it out. Thank right you. Now. <laughs> thank yeah. you. I have more <laughs> proof now, but yeah. you know, it took a few, it took a few years. Mm. I think we really have to, we have to imitate before we innovate mm. in so many ways. And, um, I kind of had to try a million things and it also took me a long time to like, you know, really own who I was. I'd already come out, but like, it was one thing to like go into a room with mostly no offense to anybody just straight <laughs> cisgendered men and then be like in nashville and you know and just be like my boyfriend or blah 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 you know yeah, like yeah. it was just even though most people are pretty chill at least in the music industry like it took me a while just to kind of own myself and yeah. i think right as i started owning myself is when it all sort of clicked and i was able to write about it but songs for me i mean i you know i was writing songs before i came out and they were always kind of this like sort of prophetic, like things I wasn't able to say yet. I would say somewhat autobiographical. There are a lot of your writing comes within that, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, I, I do like for it to be my story for the most part. And, um, yeah. 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 And along the way, you meet Justin Tranner, who's an incredible writer, uh, has a label with Warner Brothers, who you know signed mm -hmm. to. And you start working with Justin. And, and tell me about that experience. He's actually sent you like a DM or something, right? And yeah. I think that's how you met. And when you get that DM from Justin, mm. who I'm sure you were a fan of growing up and you knew his work, were you like, wait? Because Justin was also in Semi-Precious Weapons yeah. and, uh, and writes with everyone from, obviously, we spoke about Courtney Love for a little bit. And, but, mm. but a host, of, I mean, so many great artists from Bieber to Gaga to everyone. I, and I think you saw him open up for Gaga when you yeah. were like 12. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was definitely aware and such a fan of Justin and all they've done over the years. Um, and yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll never forget. I was like in London writing and got this DM that they had just heard, uh, 
uh, again, talking about like, you know, my song was just there and yeah. it was just the song I wrote called Jacob from the Bible, which is like a gay love story comparing to <laughs> Jacob from the Bible. <laughs> so it's always the most random things. And I was singing in a church and they said they like watched it all night and um, we just started working together and it was a dream because I think with Justin, it's all just about giving enough space to like tell my truth. Mm. And I don't, I haven't found that with a lot of writers, you know, I think there's a, sometimes a lot of ego involved in writing songs and, you know, people, even if they don't realize it, want you to sound a certain way. And with Justin, it was just like, get like basically let's all get out of the way and let the best song come through yeah. like taking jake's ego out of it too yeah you know and and we have so much in common too i feel like um that's just we have pretty good batting average too which i like yeah i mean <laughs> when you get in the room with someone like justin what's the process like working with him and writing songs do you come in with an idea does he come in with an idea um usually i don't know what i've realized is like the the best songs we've written like are very spontaneous mm. and it's kind of just like I said getting out of the way yeah and like let it sometimes it'll start with a story like sometimes it'll be like okay I'm kind of thinking of this or like you know we usually always work with um an amazing writer producer Aaron Kanata and sometimes he's like playing his acoustic and you know um like when we wrote Middle of Love like I guess like a couple months before I had written those first lyrics and it was like very slow and because that's my like default it's just yeah. like ballad <laughs> right. no, like just me brooding over the piano is kind of natural me um pluto which is an amazing exactly, song that's yeah. Same, yeah yeah kind of like that's that's more my normal tempo and then but that day was i think justin was like what if we just what if we just put a click and make it this fast you know so it's kind of that's what i like about justin too because it is very gentle it's just like a suggestion you don't have to do it um but obviously it turned out great and you know that little ballad turned into a ver like a very anthemic upbeat moment yeah you know i heard and uh, correct me if i'm wrong but that you actually used to storyboard your ideas for songs so and you you're very organized like i am too and i guess <laughs> everything's like in emails and folders yeah. and it's like here are all my songs storyboarded before i've even written them which is incredible <laughs> you never you don't really hear about the writing hmm. process done like that is that sort of how some of your ideas come about like maybe there were like picture inspirations or just concepts that you had first yeah totally I mean, a lot of it's very visual i feel like i usually start with like a mood board um, which is amazing at least the last couple projects I have um, and even now as I'm kind of gearing up to write my first full length and, and finish that it's like it's very conceptual before it's even actual I love it. <laughs> yeah. so what was the story behind dark bird it was something we we're going to get tattoo I believe right yeah um, I well dark bird for me like I I last May you know, I went through this big breakup and put all my stuff in storage, left Nashville, and I went to New Orleans because something just told me to go to New Orleans. It was kind of like a gut feeling that didn't really make sense, but I'm glad I did because right when I did, that was kind of when everything opened up. Mm. You know, I felt like um, that's kind of right when the music started happening and we were releasing everything and a really magical time and I just met some really powerful people and one of these people one of this this person they had this raven tattoo and um they're from Alaska and they told me this story of um um where they're from this indigenous story of the raven um and in the story the 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 eagle has the sun um and the world is dark. So it's a creation story. And the raven is this trickster and disguises itself and steals the sun from the eagle and mm. gives it away. So it was this intimate moment with the stranger as they told me this. And um, we were sitting by like the Mississippi River. And, and they just kept saying like, steal the sun, steal the sun, steal the sun. You know, it's like, <laughs> and it's, it kind of became this like 
you know, this mantra in me to steal the sun and that it is our, it's, it's our darkest qualities that connect us, that yeah. make us the most human and nothing human is alien. And, and all those qualities bring so much light to us. So that song's kind of, you know, it's like, it's kind of celebrating the like, okay, just burn your whole life down. Cause I kind of burned my whole life down and I really love what I've been able to build. Yeah, definitely. And even DARPA, I was saying to you before, it's, it's a different, it's a different Jake Wesley Rogers, right? It's actually more, I would say not guitar oriented, but like just a, a heavier sound, a more robust sound. Usually it's yourself and a piano and, and it feels a little bit more uh, streamlined in terms of the, the, the uh, musicianship. It's, it's, um, I would say now you've added a different kind of, yeah, like just these grandiose mm. pop thing, which is incredible. And what a great song. Uh, and you have a couple other songs that are dropping, mm -hmm. a couple other singles that are dropping in the next few weeks. Let's talk about those two. Yeah, yeah. I have this one, Lavender Forever, I'm really excited about. You know, I think if Dark Bird is kind of a, this dark um, rock energy, I feel like this one is kind of the flip side of it, the the light that comes after it and the celebration that comes after you burn your life down. <laughs> I love, I love artists like, uh, like Bowie that constantly change and evolve yeah. and, and like yourself, I would say too. I mean, how important would you say like is image to you and fashion and a lot of things when you, when you look at artists like Bowie, you see how they've evolved over the years. I mean, do you relate to an artist like David? And, totally. Yeah. Um, I think reinvention is yeah. key. And sometimes I feel like I <laughs> like have to slow myself down a little bit yeah. because I'm like, people are still coming to the party, you know, <laughs> yeah. like if I can't, <laughs> like my instinct is just to dye my hair a different color, like every three weeks, but, um, and maybe I should, I would I don't, I don't really put that much rules as far as, but I do love like kind of embodying the song mm. and embody, like, especially, I think that's one of the beautiful things about social media is it does allow the artist to kind of paint this picture of what a song is to them. And um, that's what's so fun about Dark Bird was like for the first time I was able to kind of do these kind of dark, gothy images and dive into that witchiness. And then this next thing is so spring and floral. Yeah. And I don't get bored. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the witchiness is interesting, right? Because you yeah. do love a bit of tarot cards. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I know that you spend a little bit of time with those. So tarot cards tell you anything in terms of this next year and where you're headed and maybe the new record? Is it usually pretty true to you when you do the cards and you look at them? You feel like it really is it? Yeah. I mean, it told me that I shouldn't date anybody for a really long time. So <laughs> <laughs> you follow it pretty religiously. Or that's, that the, right? that's the main theme of this year right. is like, don't date anybody. <laughs> <laughs> don't date anyone. But what about career wise too? What, what, what do I don't, say? I honestly don't read them that much for a career. I don't know if it freaks me out or not even freaks me out, but like, cause they are really accurate. And sometimes I feel like so much of what we do as artists is just insane. And, you kind of have to follow the path. Yeah. And I also feel like my gut's pretty strong and I'm able to kind of listen to my instincts. And sometimes I just know, but sometimes I do need reassurance, you know, I feel like I use tarot more for just like, like say on a release day, it's like, okay, what should I remember today? You know? Yeah. Like less like, is this going to change my life? Cause <laughs> We'll just let that happen. <laughs> did it say anything about this interview in the tarot cards? I, I, I oh. did not. I did not ask. <laughs> okay. I didn't ask, but I did have a really good reading yesterday. So Amazing. maybe that was that was involved. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, let's talk about your friendship with Elton John, Madonna. You have so many incredible celebrity fans. I mean, meeting Elton John, having Elton John interview you for his 300th show must have been incredible. I love that Elton calls you like an elongated version <laughs> of himself, right, when he was when he was younger. Um, how did it feel to be interviewed by him and to have him be such a huge fan? I think that Jake from the Scissor Sisters, Jake Shears, mm -hmm. initially turned him on to Middle Love, or, or, and, and that's how you guys met, right? Yeah, Jake was one of the people I met in New Orleans. So oh, I think okay. All leading of, back to the... It really does. Yeah, it all yeah. leads back. I think that's one of the reasons I was supposed to go was to meet jake and so where'd you meet jake by the way how did you how did you come to meet him jake was we met this is kind of random but the music video i did for momentary when i was in new orleans i flew to la to film that video 
and the stylist, um, Olivia Purdock, had just worked with Jake. And she was like, where are you living? I was like, I'm in New Orleans. And um, she's like, oh, I know Jake Shears. And I knew who Jake Shears was. And she was like, I'll introduce you to you. And I thought she was kind of, you know, people say that all yeah, the time. Yeah. Like, they never do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then right back, she's like, oh, and then Jake like called me. And that's, I feel like that's like the New Orleans spirit, though, is mm. like, it is so friendly and welcoming because it's such a weird place, yeah. you know, and also not many people just go there. So I think when you go there and, 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 and Jake has a place there, he was just immediately welcoming. And I met this beautiful group of creative, fabulous people through him. And yeah, I played him some of my s- songs and he was like, Elton needs to hear this. And I was kind of like, <laughs> you're like out oh, and John needs to okay <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> and again I was like you know people say things right, so like right. yeah you can send it if yeah. you want to send it um, and then do you get a phone call from Elton John or how does it how no do you... I didn't talk to him until uh the interview but yeah um so someone let's say at the label of Darren or someone comes to you and says hey Elton John actually wants to interview you about yeah yeah he told Jake we were kind of like talking through Jake for a minute and the whole time I was still just kind of dissociating um <laughs> and and yeah the whole interview was kind of like very it's surreal like, you're oh, pinching yourself is this really happening totally yeah totally just trying to stay calm and uh and it was it was uh, i think now that i'm a few months out of it though i'm able to be like okay that was one of the coolest things now has he come to see you play yet or have you no sadly um just because of covid we haven't been able to connect yeah i was with jake again in new orleans and we saw him play but his whole tour was like locked down so he couldn't even say hi but but i do have some intel this interview probably won't run till around april may okay but i think you might be performing somewhere where elton is so i think you will officially yes meet in person. hey <laughs> so, hey it so. might be on the instagram yeah. so in the future <laughs> yeah well yeah by the time this is out uh i think it'll be it'll be public so yeah so um it's great i think you'll be able to i think what i understand you'll, yes he'll be performing it's something that elton's at so it's great it's great that you will finally connect with him and there is a tour i believe coming out later this year you'll be announcing the tour and yes touring plans. yeah you very, excited very about soon it? oh god i'm so excited i've just i think that's that was one of the weirdest parts about releasing music, like kind of during the heat of COVID is just couldn't play. Yeah. Um, and I just love playing so much, but, but one of the beautiful things we were able to kind of build, build this ship and, and, and find people who like the music. And so now it, now it's surreal for me because, you know, teams kind of saying like, you know, we're ready to do a tour. And I'm like, are you, sure (laughs) i've never played in tucson arizona (laughs) but if you say so like let's do it let's try so i'm i'm over the moon to to actually like connect with the people out there because you know you kind of feel like you're in a void sometimes when you're making music and you forget that it can make an impact and and you're such a great performer that it's a lot about who you are. But I was going to say along the way, you have played at, you just got back from South by Southwest, mm-hmm. which looked like an incredible show. And you played at Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo. But even earlier on, I think when you did a tour of Europe, you were playing at really small venues. Totally, right? yeah. Like, almost like bed and breakfast as though I saw on YouTube. Yeah, I know, It was literally. very small. So what do you prefer? What's been your favorite gig so far? The Troubadour gig, as I mentioned to you, is one of my standout gigs <laughs> in the last like five years. So I left that show just thinking... Jake Wesley Rogers is a star mm-hmm. and I told the whole world about it. I think I actually spoke about you on the show probably mm-hmm. a year ago after or whenever it was. That it was October. So but um yeah, I, I spoke I spoke about that show for like weeks to come. Mm-hmm. Um because also the energy you create on stage, I think you might have covered Madonna like yeah. a virgin that night. Yeah. And your rapport with your band is great. It almost mm. seems like you're like a great group of friends and the way you joke around. And I, I can't remember specifically what was going on, but I do remember there was a lot of camaraderie yeah. between all the band members. I love them so yeah. much. Yeah, we do Truth or Dare. Exactly, the, the Truth end, or yeah. Dare thing that I remember, <laughs> which was great, on stage. Well, um, I was like, I don't know. I, I feel like when you go to a show and they introduce the band, sometimes it's kind of this like awkward, yeah. like, long process which is important you have to introduce your band but like what's the way to do that's more yeah memorable and it's like yeah let's play truth or dare and it's really not scripted so <laughs> whatever and i think i'm gonna keep that yeah i just um i don't that troubadour show was 
very special for many reasons because that was kind of that was my first headline show back it was my first sold out show ever i think wow um and to play it there which just oozes with history definitely um well i think elton john one of his first concerts yeah, was exactly. at the Troubadour, from what i remember yeah yeah i mean they all played there yeah and everybody still plays there you know it's kind of in my favorite place to go see people i think you did you just have cassandra jenkins on right yeah i just saw her there yeah, yeah. she's been one of my favorites lately she's great she was uh, actually on spin's uh top 10 record of the year oh god that record's so, so good it's a great record yeah that yeah. record like changed me last year <laughs> yeah. but i feel like because you're such an intimate artist and you have such an intimate relationship with your audience mm -hmm. if you play a big festival like Lollapalooza or bonnaroo it's not the same you can't maybe connect with the audience as much as when you play the smaller venues which do you prefer mm. i do prefer a club show i mean yeah. i think you can't really beat that electricity of just like bodies you know this is scary coming out of covid but like just bodies slammed together <laughs> at the front of the stage yeah. like you know, um, but I think there are, I'm learning there are, you know, like South by Southwest, for instance, like there are ways to, when it's outside and there's more space, there's ways to include everybody. Yeah. It's just sometimes you have to get jump a little in, more creative. Jump in the audience, maybe? I do jump in the yeah. audience, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd do that if I, if I really want to grab them. <laughs> Sing in someone's face. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Tell me the story, by the way, of Live from a Courthouse, which was a great uh, little mm. piece you did that's on YouTube, too, and a great show. What was the idea behind that? Well, we did that because um, I couldn't play a show. Yeah. Because um, that was May of, or April of 2021. So the idea was like, well, one of the biggest selling points of me is my live performance. So we need to, like, as we release music, we need to be able to share that. So we had a few different ideas for live performances and I kind of, I don't know. I, a lot of the songs on the EP are kind of about like either weddings or funerals or kind of like the, like the things we do as humans because perhaps we feel like we have to. And, um, I was I was still in Nashville and there's this like old ass courthouse and, it was perfect. It was so like seventies and like paneled and, right. um, you know, I, I wanted to, to kind of bring my songs into this place, especially in like a Southern courthouse, like the, I can't even begin <laughs> to imagine what went the history, the there, terrible right? yeah. things that have probably happened there. I'm sure. Um, and the exclusion of so many people there and, mm. um, and specifically I was just thinking of, you know, queerness and you're getting married at the courthouse. Like, even though it's allowed now, like it's definitely not like, I think if this was in like a tiny town, you know, yeah. so it was a lot of things yeah. and, you know, we were able just to kind of bring our love into it. And it's one of my favorite things I've ever done. And it's, you know, kind of the first thing that opened a door to a lot of people. Like that's, we, I posted that performance and, that's the thing that like Kate Hudson shared that day and it kind of brought all these new people into my m music. So yeah, I'm just thrilled with how it turned out. It's incredible. Speaking of Kate Hudson, you have an incredible celebrity fan base. Like we spoke about, have you met all these celebrity fans of yours so far? Or some of them? I haven't met all of them, but some of them I have. I met Kate Hudson came to my show in New York city, which is so sweet, which is so funny. Cause it was like, you know, Mercury lounge, which yeah, is like great place an amazing venue but it's yeah. just so funny <laughs> <laughs> you know this kind of like there's no backstage yeah. you know like <laughs> right. it's the backstage is the stage the backstage is literally the stage yeah. um yeah so met her um haven't um i don't know well i i and i finally met ryan reynolds too and he's been a super super sweet big fan the past year and we talked about the fact that we'll have to have you meet courtney love at some point God, because she's a that. huge fan mm -hmm. and uh she was posting about you we talked about it before but one a couple last things i want to ask you jake too i mean you're on warners now you're on justin's label mm -hmm. how is it different for you versus like yourself and your manager early on diy doing things on your own it was probably just a couple of you on tour years ago and now yeah. you're part of this big machine which is a great machine uh, and we love the folks at Warner's. Yeah. Um, but uh, tell me how, how life is different for you now. When you put out a record now, 
how does life how is life different obviously you do a lot of these things but also like i said and we were talking about it you're on you know you're on ellen you're on jimmy fallon you're on all these amazing talk shows now and early on you were just playing mm. little venues so I, I think things have to be different for you now and, and just talk about breaking a newer artist now what it, what it means to you to be part of this different method of uh, of being a performer yeah um things are definitely different but i always just have to come back to the music and the songs yeah and why i did it and why i started and and i also think that like you know it was just me in the beginning and then just me and my manager and you have to keep those relationships the strongest so because the more people you add on the team the more opinions there are True. And, um luckily i've been really blessed with a team that kind of <laughs> for the most part just agrees with what i'm doing and they kind of just let me do what i want to do and um but also like get <laughs> step in when 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 jake isn't seeing super clearly too so it's a lot you know i won't i won't lie i think it's a lot to juggle just like you know writing and then making tiktoks and then doing the visuals and but it's the i mean it's a gift too to be able to do this and it's a privilege and i have to like zoom out yeah a lot and and just kind of realize how magnificent life is life is yeah. yeah well i'm excited for the full length record thank you the music is fantastic the tour coming up uh anything else we can talk about by may i guess there, there are other things we can talk about there's a couple new songs that are dropping like we mentioned yeah and then the tour should be announced i think in about a month or so yeah tour will be announced really soon okay so we'll, we'll, so fun. we'll have yeah. you back on and we actually want you to perform a song we'll see if we can yeah. figure that out but that would be amazing we've had a few performances on the show so far and i think when once people hear you too mm -hmm. everyone will be huge fans <laughs> of jake wesley rogers as am i oh um but dark bird is the new song that's out now yeah so make sure you all tune in uh, where can we find obviously tiktok which yeah. i love what you're doing on tiktok yeah. so check out jake's yeah. tiktok check out jake's instagram obviously the site and and all the music that you're putting out i love what you do thank you for being so incredible oh my god and uh, one of my favorite new artists so i appreciate you coming on thank you for having and, me and uh and i'll see you for sure when you play in la next heck yeah see you soon awesome thanks, thanks so jake. much